Boom. All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Stock Talk, a series where we cover exciting news and price action in regard to stocks that are exciting me personally at the moment. In today's episode, we are going to be covering the cannabis sector. We did touch on this sector a few days ago in our Sunday Stock Watch, and so far over the course of this week, it has been performing beautifully. So I'm excited to follow up on some plays that we covered on Sunday, like Afria and Sundial, as well as touch on some legacy plays, some of the bigger plays within the cannabis sector, like Tilray, Canopy Growth, and Kronos Group. All right. So so uh, let's just dive straight into this. As always, we'll quickly go over each topic we're going to be discussing and then we'll dive in. So in front of us, the usual trading view where we will, of course, be covering technicals and price action today on each of the following plays in this order going down the watch list. Kicking it off with TLRY, Tilray, Kennedy Growth, once again, Kronos Group just named all these. I'm still going to do it anyway. Afria and then closing out with Sundial. Uh, to be honest, guys, Afria and Sundial are my favorite plays. I would say my personal favorite plays in this sector right now. Afria is like the most financially sound company in, in the cannabis space, in my opinion, and almost objectively. So I love Afria as a safe play as a solid play with uh with still significant growth potential and then sundial is the play in this sector that i believe has the most asymmetric potential all right so if you guys have been following the channel for a while you guys know that we like to identify plays with that asymmetric profile which means that the the, the potential upside significantly outweighs the potential downside and because sundial has just been ravaged over the course of 2020 I really think that it has a lot of potential to do well over 2021, which is why I want to talk to you guys about it and why the one article we're going to be touching on at the very end. Again, we'll go over the technicals on each of these plays, take a look at each of these charts, and then I'll save the sundial analysis, uh, the individual analysis where we'll go over this article at the end in case you want to stick around. Okay, so this is titled Sundial Growers, a busy end to 2020 indicates potential strategic expansion. And uh, when we first started covering the, ca uh, the cannabis space, like over half a year ago now, um, shout out to you guys if you if you were around back then uh, let me know in the comments if you were but um, again I Sundial has been on my radar for a long time and over the course of 2020 mid 2020 I really didn't like this play because their financials were rough the company was in a bad place but over the course of the of the fourth quarter they closed out 2020 on a pretty good note and uh, we'll go over some of just sundials financials and what's going on with the company fundamentally in this article a very cons comprehensive article i really like this and it's, it's pretty long so again i will save this for the end by Moss, mossy harbor analytics shout out to these guys it's a very good article but again we'll save that for the end and this is very promising and kind of just feeds into the the price action side of where i expect sundial to go again because i think this play has a lot of potential if all goes accordingly of course Okay, so we'll touch on that at the end. Uh, we will also touch on you guys just tomorrow just to give you some insight as to what's tomorrow. I know the crypto cryptocurrency sector is looking strong right now. These just recycled, but Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of this is up over 10%. Um, 10% double digit pr uh, percentage gains over the past 24 hours. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming some crypto stocks that, that we like to talk about all around here are going to do well tomorrow as well. So we will cover those tomorrow. We'll make a crypto convo, a crypto stock talk tomorrow as well. So just keep that in mind. And then just a quick shout out to ALYI, the stock, the, the penny, the micro micro cap stock that we covered in yesterday's EV stock talk up 26% today. So that's sick. You love to see that feels good. Again, obviously we didn't like completely dictate that, but it just feels good to, um, to have that happen the day after a video is posted. Okay. So cool stuff there again, but we are focusing on the cannabis sector. So let's get into that before we do. As always, I will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do go on to gain value from it today, or if you're invested in any of the stocks we're talking about, subscribe to the channel. If you're new around here, want to catch more content like this, I greatly appreciate it if you do. And of course, check out my complete portfolio daily newsletter, first link down in the description. If you want a complete breakdown, my entire portfolio, all call options, put options, stock positions, you know the deal, cryptocurrencies as well, of course. Update that every single trading day during market hours. And with every update, I send out an email newsletter rationalizing my thoughts. Um, even if I'm not making trades, I'll just give you guys like charts and analyses that I think are relevant to the portfolio. And that um, I, I'm obviously keeping an eye on myself and, and that I'm bullish on, okay, or bearish in case of the put options or something. So uh, again, if you want to know exactly what I'm doing personally and uh, get some real time updates from me during market hours, first link in the description. Uh, appreciate it, of course, if you do. Uh, if not, though, no worries at all. Let's get in to Tilray, kicking it off with TLRY, the biggest gainer in this sector today, up 12.5% on the day. So Tilray, 
of all the stocks in the sector has seen the most significant gain short term. All right. So of course we are as always on the four hour candles and you can see here just since we gapped up on the 5th of January, just at the beginning, that was the beginning of this week, right? No, no, no. Sorry. That was the beginning. That was last week sometime, man. This, this year's going by so fast already. It's crazy. But January 5th, let's just do a quick price range on this. So price range from January 5th, it was at 950 gapped up. And since then it has reached a high just earlier today of 1580, which is a 65% gain. All right. So it has performed the best over the course of this week. Again, Tilray, uh, for those of you who may not know, did reach a high of like $240 back in the crazy cannabis bubble of 2018. Um, let me know, please, down below if you guys were involved in that. I'm very curious to see how many of you were around for that bubble. Um, that was a fun time. That was a fun time, you guys. So, of course, I have been watching these plays for a long time. It's just crazy. Uh, when you experience that, you understand how high some of these revolutionary spec uh, speculative. It was it definitely a bubble. The financials made no sense for that bubble, which makes it a bubble and not a fundamental rally. Uh, but Tilray, again, has has hit highs of like $240, which is insane um, and is now at $15. So just to give you guys a, a frame of reference for how crazy this price target may look, it's really not crazy if you understand Tilray's history. All right. But on the short term, I do think we will see a pullback in Tilray considering it's up 65% just over the past week or so. Okay. So you can see here Tilray has set a short term. Um, it is kind of in somewhat of an ascending channel. I assume it is going to use this now as an ascending channel. It has two points of reference on this line of resistance at the top end. And then this area that was a significant area of resistance, I think will now act as a significant area of support and we will be in an ascending channel. So uh, the kind of just it's not even bearish because I do think ultimately we will come up to test this green line, which we'll talk about. But I do think Tilray could see a short term pullback. You can see this orange line I've had drawn here for, again, probably half a year. This is just a very historical area of resistance. It's, it's acted as a ceiling in the past for Tilray. So we're not going to zoom out, but um, just trust me on that one. You guys can look it up for yourself if you want. Uh, I, of course, always recommend you guys go draw your own trend lines on your own charts. Always do your own research. You guys know the deal there. But I do expect this to play out as a sending channel Tilray because it's gone up 65%. I expect a short term correction, probably down to this area, this initial high prior to this recent rally, which also lines up again with the bottom side of what now, uh, what I believe will now be an ascending channel. Okay, so downside, I think Tilray will we'll see a short term pullback to about 1250. I'd be very comfortable picking up Tilray shares at 1250. So pull back short term to 1250, ultimately come back up, bounce around here, probably test the top side of what is now this line of resistance on this ascending channel on this uptrend, um, come up to about $17. And if we can break through that, I think it's very likely that uh, we, we do ultimately test the top side of resistance on this long term uptrend, which is a very optimistic play. But keep in mind, you guys, um, even a $27 price target by early February uh, would not surprise me at all if, if, again, if you're aware of what some of these pot stocks are capable of doing. Okay, so till right, $27 price target, if all goes accordingly, keep in mind, we could just stay in this ascending channel. But if we do break this ascending channel, which would mean like just, just to play it safe, a close above $18, I think we're heading up to like $27. Okay, so definitely keep your eye on this, guys. And uh, yeah, it's, it'll be exciting to see what happens here. Moving on, CGC, the largest play by market cap in this sector. Uh, CGC was so bullish on it here, you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember as such. You guys, I think this was the last time we were really covering CGC. So bullish on it in early December. It was in a beautiful ascending channel. I thought it was so likely right here that we would come up and test the top side once again. Um, but we didn't. We broke below it. And you can see since then, we have been below it. So I think it's very likely. Where did my arrow go? I swore I drew an arrow. So let's take the arrow. Just be, It's not completely necessary, but just for you guys. I think it's very likely that CGC you see uses the bottom side of what was once this uh, this longer term medium to long term ascending channel um, and use that uh, was once a strong line of support as a new line of resistance because again TA 101 right there was once support uh, was once support will be new resistance and vice versa okay so I do expect CGC to come up to about forty dollars end of end of January end of February of course depending on it could rally up tomorrow say it hits tomorrow we would see a thirty seven dollar CGC but I'm expecting forty dollars plus uh, by the end of January early February all right. So that is CGC, pretty simple there. Um, pretty pretty solid play in my opinion. Kronos Group is looking pretty, pretty promising. So Kronos has just re-entered, just today on this rally, has re-entered, it's, it's old school. Like, I remember tracking this way back here, March of 2020 is when it started printing this ascending channel. And this was a strong ascending channel right here, you guys. You can see it was super, I mean, played out in a very strong way over in this area, like way back here from, uh, from mid-March, 
to August. So over the span of months, it was it was in this nice ascending channel and ultimately broke below has been using again what was once a strong line of support as resistance. It's had a hard time getting above that line, but we just closed today. This is very, very bullish for Kronos, and I think it's very likely. Um, maybe we see a little pullback, come back down to test the, the bottom side of, the, of this line of his the, the bottom side of this ascending channel, the support line right here, this orange line, maybe see a slight pullback just because, again, similar to till rate has been ripping as well, going from like $7.50 to almost $11 in a, in a pretty short span of time, um, which is 50% plus gain. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised, you guys, if uh, we come down, test the bottom side, but ultimately come up over this uh, by, I would say, Pretty, pretty soon, like by early February, I wouldn't be surprised if we come up to test the top side of this ascending channel, this very long term, strong ascending channel. And that would take us to about a $13.50 uh, $13 Kronos, okay? Which, um, keep in mind, being at $10.70 is a significant price, uh, pri like that's a significant jump in price. It's over 30% uh, appreciation, okay? So um, that's exciting, could be an exciting play. Again, I do think we could see a short term pullback in both Tilray and Kronos, just because they've seen the most love um, over just this past week but i still believe there's a lot of upside for both these plays uh, again after we see that short term short term correction as we all know corrections are a healthy part of every bull market so afria a play that i've really uh, is just so strong you guys afria uh, i want to zoom out here quickly so let's go to the yearly real quick go to the daily candles and just i want to show you guys afria's um, so Afria is one of the few plays that is below. I mean, I guess Tilray is now below its IPO price as well, but Tilray's financials are honestly really bad. So Afria did, I don't know why the heck is Afria tracking? I don't know why Afria is tracking all the way. This, this must be like the Canadian exchange, but Afria IPO'd on the US exchange back in 2018 around here. Uh, where, where the heck was it? It IPO'd around $12. I don't know. I don't, this is kind of weird, you guys. Sorry, I didn't expect this. But anyway, IPO, you can look at your Robinhood account or whatever. Um, Afria IPO'd at about 1250 on the US exchanges, okay, or on the on the New York Stock Exchange. And since then, it pretty much crashed. So they IPO'd at the worst possible time at the very end of the cannabis bubble in 2018 when everything started to pop. And immediately upon IPOing at 1250, they fell off a cliff, which is right here, and then came to a low. Um, of three dollars and seventy cents, bounced up, dead cap bounced, and then ultimately came down to a low of under two dollars in March when when we saw the liquidity crisis earlier this year, which is crazy to think, you guys. But Afria uh, has recently, if you just look at this, so there's a few things I'm looking at here. Afria has recently broken this very long-term uh, line of resistance on this overall uptrend, okay? So you can see a lot of points of contact right here, very strong line of resistance beginning in April of 2020. Um, it did just uh, just over the past couple of days break above that, and now it is, it is 100% above that. So we are now gonna take into play this short-term, This these lines, I did not alter these for the past week or so, you guys. Um, for the past like couple weeks, maybe, uh, but, it's, it's just it's just i'm not i mean i mean it's completely luck generated right there but it's always funny when these these random arrows i draw play out like pretty well okay so um yeah again now that this long-term line of resistance has been confirmed broken it is uh, above it for two days that's a confirmed break i think this shorter term short to medium term trend line will definitely come into play in the near future so i think this is almost guaranteed i think it's like almost a guarantee like 99.9 percent .9 that after will come up to test this line of resistance on this more short to medium term uptrend and that would take us say we hit it tomorrow which i think is very possible at about ten dollars and eighty cents uh after that i think it is likely that we could pull back come test this area but then ultimately i do think we will result like this short-term bull uh, bull rally uh talking in early february i think it's very very possible that africa can come up to to level out with its uh with its ipo price at about twelve dollars and fifty cents and just complete that huge horseshoe pattern Pattern, okay so again fell off a cliff been kind of dragging down ever since but it's, it's you're seeing a nice cup play out and uh, i think it will pop a nice ue and ultimately resolve itself at its ipo price at about 1250 okay so from here it's a nice 25 percent gain so uh, if you have the, if you have the right call options in place shout out to the portfolio group these africa calls over the past week have been absolutely just floating the portfolio just making the portfolio very happy so again shout out to the portfolio newsletter group right there um, i hope you guys are eating well with these africa calls as well uh, of course if you choose to never want you to copy me but again i think we all know this is a promising play so after very bullish again i do think after we do test this short-term uptrend we will pull back but ultimately over the course of the next month or so i do expect africa to come up to about 1250 and that will be my uh, and then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it because that's the IPO price. So that'll obviously pose some um, some resistance and act as some sort of ceiling, okay? 
So, last but not least, Sundial, the play that, again, has the most asymmetric potential in my mind, but is objectively the most risky. So, Sundial, you can see here, is currently sitting at about 65 cents. It, surprisingly, is down a percent and a half, a little bit after hours as well. So, like, down 2% on the day while the rest of the sector is doing very well, which is a little troubling to me. But... Um, similar to what I've been saying about crypto, as money fl flows out of crypto, as money flows out of the larger, th like, so Tesla and Neo, like we just talked about yesterday, because they're so they're so large comparative, um, comparatively to many of the other plays within the EV sector for this uh, reference. Um, that's a lot of capital that can flow out of these large cap stocks, like multi, multi billion dollar stocks into smaller plays where, where that capital would go a lot longer way in regard to boosting the individual share price. Okay, so. A uh, similar thing here, if we do see a short-term correction in, say, Tilray, say, Chrono, say, even Afria, um, after after a little move up, maybe a move down, hopefully, uh, what I'm betting is going to happen is, again, the money is still going to want to be invested in this promising sector. If money is invested in cannabis, it's going to want to stay in cannabis. And I believe that as money flows out of these larger plays, it could potentially flow into smaller, um, more underappreciated plays, in the short term, at least, like Sundial, okay? So, short-term, Sundial. Uh, I got two price targets right now. So Sundial, I know for a fact, is now going to see a little bit of resistance. You know, let's go to the four hour here to make it look a little more digestible. So Sundial, I know for almost a fact, I would put so much money on it that <laughs> Sundial will see a little bit of resistance around here because it is in a technical short term downtrend beginning on the 1st of December. So um, it did reach a, a local high, a yearly high at about not a yearly high because uh, we'll zoom out on Sundial and I'll show you guys what we're talking about after this. But uh, we did reach a, a high a month of bi-monthly whatever over the past few months has been the high at about 95 cents since then uh, we came down here this is another touch point it's now in a technical downtrend so if we do come up it is very very likely that we will use this as a lot of resistance uh, which take us to about 75 cents which is still over 10 percent appreciation okay which is uh, important to understand that's like a 15 percent uh, price appreciation right there if we can even come up to test this so that's pretty good in itself but if we can break through that i think we will ultimately test this this longer term more it's like medium term trend line which makes me again because this is a pretty medium term uptrend right here and again using the conservative trend lines i'm not even using this absolute top um using this touch point right here this touch point right here to ultimately create this trend line and uh, i do think that by early february i'm feeling pretty confident about this again we do have to break this break out of this short term uptrend or short term downtrend uh, but if we can do that, I'm very, very confident that we will ultimately come up to test this more medium term uh, line of resistance on this overall uptrend. And that would take us to about uh, a $1.80 sundial, which is almost a 3x, so like a 2.5 3x from its current prices. And uh, again, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about asymmetric risk, okay? So let's zoom out. And then again, I, I usually go over the fundamentals first. We usually read the article first, uh, but we'll read that after uh, just again, just to educate you guys. If you want to stick around, it's cool. If not, no worries at all. Um, so let's actually go to the yearly and see Sundial's chart over the last year. So Sundial, again, has seen so much. We will learn about Sundial's shortcomings uh, financially in the article that we read, but it's crazy to see. So Sundial, see how much we have to zoom out. Sundial IPO'd at over $13. So we'll just call an IPO at $13. Immediately fell off a freaking cliff. So Sundial, again, as, as the, like the cannabis bubble is pretty much gone already. Sundial also IPO'd at a bad time and their financials uh, proved to be pretty poor as well, which did cause Sundial to fall off an absolute cliff and reach this year a low. I'm, again, it's under a dollar now. Reach a low back in November, which was not too long ago at 13 cents. So 13 cents to $13, you guys, you guys can do the math there. That is a thousand X. Okay. So um, that is not a thousand X. I'm not going to try to do the math right now. I'm going to sound stupid if I keep doing that. But regardless, you guys know how high Sundial can go just from a price action perspective. Granted, they did dilute their stock. They did dilute their share significantly, which let's just get into now so we can um, all be on kind of the same page. Again, Sundial Growers is busy and to 2020 indicates potential strategic expansion. So again, you guys, the price action, like from the technical perspective, I'm bullish. I'm bullish on Sundial. I like the asymmetric potential of Sundial a lot. Um, but this... Uh, knowing that they do have some fundamentals in their favor as well in the short term, they're they're making a lot of tangible steps forward in the right direction in the short term. So that's always good too. Summary: Sundial became twenty uh, began twenty twenty with a challenging balance sheet, including over um, Canadian. Uh, 220 million uh, Canadian dollars of debt and a series of revenue misses. Throughout the year, the company worked to eliminate debt and expand opportunities to grow the business through strategic changes that could drive shareholder value. The Zenibus debt purchase could provide regular cash infusions and partnered expansions into a new market segment and could drive organic growth. 
Moving on, of course, not gonna read all of this. I will, um, I mean, just you guys just Google this if you wanna read it for yourself, but it's a long read. Only gonna give you guys some, some of the highlights. Recently, Sundial has been under financial pressure as they carried a heavy debt load into 2020. However, as 2020 came to a close, there were some signs of positive change. Sundial is focusing on growing the brand flower market share, which sells at a net 24% premium to unbranded flower as of Q3 2020. So again, when you're talking about overall revenue and stuff, a 24% premium is very significant. Additionally, Sundial is focusing on cost efficiencies driving down the cost per gram sold by 42 percent from q2 to q3 2020 with management stating that the drive for per gram cost decreases will continue so again that's good news there you're talking about like very significant uh overhead overhead prices that they're that they're actively working towards dropping and successfully dropping in the short term which is great in the fourth quarter strategic expansion in the fourth quarter of 2020 sundial announced three recent events that could help provide the revenue growth that the company is hoping to see the expansion of the palmetto brand throughout canada a partnership with simply solvent concentrates uh, and the cash purchase of a special pr uh, purpose vehicle that owns um, about 60 million canadian dollars of secured debt uh, moving down, scroll down, scroll down. Debt elimination. This is very, very important. As of December 21st, 2020, the co company reported that it has repaid outstanding debt obligations totaling 22 million Canadian dollars, leaving Sundial with no outstanding debt after paying down close to 220 million Canadian dollars over the course of 2020. So that's huge, you guys. You just don't want to be in crippling debt. And now that they're no longer in crippling debt, that's literally a weight lifted off their shoulders, not only financially, but psychologically too, for their leadership team, which is good in my opinion. Um, According to the company's filing, the elimination of debt will save close to um, four million Canadian dollars per year in interest payments, and perhaps most importantly, removes all remaining uh, covenants and restrictions regarding Sundial's ability to pursue strategic opportunities. So again, that's the thing. When you have debt, it's it, this applies even on a personal level, obviously on a business level, even even more at, at even more at scale. But I'm sure all of you have been in some sort of debt at some point, and it just it's a cloud. It's a cloud over your head. So once you get out of what was once very crippling debt, it uh, again it's not only good financially, it's good for for the ego, for the morale of the company and the leadership team behind it. So Dal accomplished this impressive feat through a combination of methods, but primary outcome for shareholders was dilution, as company shares outstanding grew from 11 million shares as part of this Nasdaq IPO to over 900 million shares so this is significant you guys they pretty much 90x their shares all right which is uh that's that's rough uh 90xing the amount of outstanding shares that's a lot of shares uh so that's important to remember and that's a significant uh, that's a big factor behind why you see sundial just uh, dick just fall off an absolute cliff is because they kept just pumping out new shares and diluting the individual share price uh sundial has stated that his rapid equity issuances were to eliminate debt and to fund strategic expansion for shareholders who are able to initiate a position in the stock after the dilution has occurred the future strategic expansions could provide tangible value so again you guys i think uh to sum that up although they sold they again they 90x roughly 90x you guys get the point here like 85x the amount of outstanding shares they're still i believe i believe the worst is behind them again because they are making tangible steps in the right direction uh like i said it's so important you guys just the psychological aspect of this as on the company being out of that crippling debt is going to be very good for for creativity for expansion for actually branching out and trying new things and uh, ultimately prob ultimately hopefully uh, I, I believe they will find success in those new ventures, okay? And uh, I do believe the worst is behind Sundial. We are sitting at, what, of like a 500, 400, 400 million dollar mark, sorry, 71 million dollar mark. Yeah, I feel like that's not right. I feel like that's not right. I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on that. But uh, a legend market cap of $71 million, which is tiny. That is a minuscule market cap. So there is a lot of room for potential growth here, considering Sundial has, again, fallen off an absolute cliff. Uh, I think there's definitely potential. And I do, I, I'm very, very confident personally. You guys obviously hold me to this. I could be wrong, of course, but I'm feeling very confident that over the course of the next month, Sundial will ultimately test this top trend, potentially breaking $2, depending. Say we hit it, say we hit it early March, it would bring us to about $2, okay? So. Um, again, I do think this could happen a lot faster. Let's finish this off with uh, the takeaway. Sundial is attempting a startling turnaround from a debt-laden enterprise focusing on a narrow product set to a company pursuing rapid strategic expansion with no debt on the balance sheets. Again, no debt is huge. It will be worth watching over the next two to three quarters to see if the partnered expansions into the concentrates and edible markets, coupled with the increased focus on branded sales, are able to expand the company's revenue and margins. If so, I would expect an increase in shareholder value over that time frame. The regular cash infusions from Zenibus debt servicing and the associated royalties should help provide fuel for the turnaround. So again, you guys, I like like this is similar to Riot and Mara like earlier this year, you guys. If you remember us talking about how these these companies that were once very in a in a very bad place financially just started to get like 
just get into gear get like wake they woke up they woke up they got real they said they established their position or they like grounded themselves and actually started making tangible steps in the right direction getting rid of your debt huge probably the most important thing in terms of a public company getting rid of your outstanding debt um and again pursuing new projects they're branching out into multiple different fields of cannabis and of course cannabis it's not just it's not just the flower it's not just the bud it's all the products it's a cbd it's there's so many opportunities with cannabis um that can be that can be explored that can be um explored by these companies okay so uh very exciting once again you guys i think sundial if all does go accordingly at least in the short term can come up to test here uh, which would take us to once again about a dollar and 80 cents if we hit it in early february but um again you guys because this company's gotten so beaten down because the market cap's so small i think this thing could potentially hit double digits if we see another cannabis bull um, bull market which i do believe we'll see it once again with this blue wave um, with the biden presidency and with a whole bunch of with a whole bunch of more accepting individuals in terms of cannabis at least involved in in government and regulation and whatnot okay so uh acb if you guys see that on the watch list i really don't like aurora cannabis as a company personally um so i'm sorry if you wanted to talk about that i'm not covering that today maybe in the future but i i personally don't really like acb uh fundamentally as a as a company like their financials are whack okay so uh that said, of course, let me know down below what you think about any of these plays, what plays specifically you're most excited about, and uh, what other what other parts of the market that you're excited about as well. Remember, you guys, we talk about a lot of stuff on here. I like focusing on exciting, revolutionary plays that I do believe are on the cutting edge that are about to see uh, see some see some great times. Okay, so again, we will cover crypto tomorrow. We'll talk some new plays in the crypto sector that I'm actually super excited to share with you. Uh, of course, the newsletter we'll hear about it first. So shout out to the newsletter. Uh, I, I do have an exciting crypto play to share with you tomorrow that i'm very um, excited about if i haven't said that three times already so again uh pumped to do that and i'll catch you guys tomorrow so once again leave a like on the video please if you're still watching i truly appreciate you and uh, drop a comment down below talk about whatever you want always love talking shop always love learning from you guys most of all so i'll catch you downstairs until next time always remember take action make waves peace